Welcome back to our series here where we're taking a look at classics in biblical studies, biblical theology, Christian writing that you may not be familiar with because they weren't necessarily bestsellers. They haven't permeated the Christian popular conscience as much as more recent books may have, but they're all resources that I have found incredibly helpful and that I think Dojo viewers need to know about. These aren't full reviews. I just want to bring these to your attention, put them on your radar. And then if you can find them somewhere, you know, some are still in print. Some are out of print. You may have to look around and use bookstores or online. But regardless, these are just classics that I think everybody should read. Now, as I said in the last video, I'm recording a number of these today, the week after I have been getting over a flu. So bloodshot eyes, scratchy voice, stuffed nose. I'm aware of it. Hopefully this will be gone soon and my sinuses will get back to normal here in the dojo. But sometimes you still got to push through in your training, even when you're not feeling 100%, especially when YouTube will punish you for not putting out regular content. So it'd be awesome if you appreciate this video or any of the others here on the channel, if you would click that little subscribe button and enable notifications and tell other people about Disciple Dojo. We're trying to grow this channel and we need the help of all of you out there in order to do it. So if you find value in what we do, we'd love for you to tell other people, come and see. So in this episode, I wanna let you know about a book you may or may not be familiar with. It's New Testament Theology by G.B. Caird. It's compiled by L.D. Hurst. This was called together from a number of Caird's lectures and teachings. It's by Oxford University Press and Caird taught at Oxford. He was a remarkable scholar of the 20th century. His commentary on Revelation in Black's New Testament commentary series is a fantastic commentary that I highly recommend as well. But this one is a little more under the radar, and so I wanted to let viewers know about it. Even though I'm primarily an Old Testament guy in terms of where where my focus and my interest lay, this was one of the best books that I read the year that I read it. Carrot is a remarkable author. He has a great way of uh, turning phrases or putting things in profound or catchy ways. And he's a brilliant scholar of the New Testament. Even at times when I land differently than he does on a particular passage or an interpretation of something, I still very much appreciate his insight and his perspective. And so here is the table of contents. You can see what's in the book and the introduction. So the first section, the first couple of pages, it just covers like the intro stuff. What is New Testament theology and different approaches to writing in New Testament theology. And then he breaks it up into about eight different categories, uh, concepts that are presented in the New Testament. Now he's teaching about the New Testament as a whole, not book by book, but an overall theology of the New Testament. In other words, what does the New Testament have to say about these different topics at the end of the day when you survey all of its teaching? And so there's a section on the divine plan, like what does the New Testament put itself as the completion of? Then there's a section on the need of salvation, and that deals with the universality of sin, the universality of judgment, the experience of sin, the essence of sin, the threefold Adam, the sin of the world, principalities and powers, Satan, the Antichrist, the unforgivable sin. Then there's a section on the three tenses of salvation. You know, we were saved, we are being saved, we will be saved. Those are all found in the New Testament used together. Then there's a section on the fact of salvation. There's a good discussion on corporate solidarity in this section, the one and the many, how Jesus can represent and embody the many in himself because he is the one. Incredibly helpful concept. We have a video here here in the dojo that is, it's not the same take as he gives, but it kind of builds off of that on how Jesus is the center of not just the New Testament theology, but even the Old Testament as well. And it entirely hinges on this concept of corporate solidarity. I'll link that in the video description if you're interested in it, check it out. Then there's a section on the experience of salvation, newness of life, worship, uh, sovereignty, the imitation of Christ, Christ in the spirit and the church. The hope of salvation. So this deals with eschatology and he talks about the parousia and its imminence. Then there's individual eschatology, like what happens when you die. And then historical eschatology, like where is the world as a whole going? Then a section on the bringer of salvation, which is introducing who Jesus was and, and why the New Testament centers on him. And then the theology of Jesus taking Jesus's teachings as a whole and presenting, this is what we can see him teaching. Then at the end, there's a summary of kind of what all he's concluded and an epilogue that has to do with concepts like meaning and authority. So like I said, one of the things I like about Carrot so much is he 
for an academic writer, he says things that are very preachable. So if you're a pastor, I would highly recommend reading Karen's work because you can get some good that'll preach moments out of his writing. Here's some examples. When he's talking about how Satan you know, has a hold over humanity in the New Testament, that's how he's presented, the, the ruler of the prince of this age, the ruler of the powers of the air, you know, that kind of language. And he's even able to tempt Jesus. So in that paragraph, he concludes, he says, he tempts people to do wrong, not because it's wrong, but because it appears to be right. That is a profound thought to sit and think about, especially in the age of modern culture wars and people even here on YouTube ranting against others or teaching aberrant teachings that are getting away from scripture or claiming to be teaching scripture, but are not. Just a great line and something to meditate on is evil never comes across as evil. If it did, it wouldn't be tempting. It comes across as good, which is why it's so tempting. I I love that passage. Then in the section on those who crucified Jesus and how we're tempted to think of them as the villains, he notes how even Paul said that they were sincere. And Paul himself, before his conversion, he was sincere. They had zeal. It was just misguided zeal. And he ends with this line, but in all the annals of human vice, no power is as destructive or demonic as perverted sincerity. This is very in line with C.S. Lewis's discussion of this in Mere Christianity, I believe. It might have been screw tape, but I think it's Mere Christianity. How the most evil, the most heinous and insidious form of evil is done by people who have sincere motives and think that they are doing good. Then in his discussion on eschatology and how, you know, we live in the now, but not yet. And that the Bible doesn't actually teach that when you die, you go to heaven to be with God forever, but rather new creation, resurrection, uh, renewed heavens and earth. That's the goal all along. And some people may point to, you know, Jesus saying, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. And that means that to get those treasures, we have to die and go to heaven. And I love this line. He says, along this line, it may be surprising to note that there are few, if any, passages in the New Testament that promise that people will go to heaven when they die. It is true that their inheritance or treasure or new life is frequently said to be laid up for them in heaven, but those who inherit a fortune do not have to live in the vaults of their father's bank in order to enjoy it. That's just such a great way to put it. You can have treasure laid up. That doesn't mean that that's your destination. The treasure will be brought to you. You will inherit it. It will. It's it's just a great way to think about the new creation and our treasures in heaven. Like in Revelation, the new heavens and new earth, the holy city Jerusalem comes down from heaven, and heaven and earth are joined, and new creation, all that. So. Again, just a great analogy, great, simple, profound way to put a very biblical theological concept. And then lastly, when dealing with some of the things in church history, evils that have been committed in the name of Jesus, he doesn't shy away from that. He recognizes it. And he says, there's no human authority which is so high or so holy that it cannot become an instrument of Satan. This is true even of scripture. As soon as scripture is used for the purpose of coercion or regimentation, this principle comes into effect and history is littered with and disfigured by its record. So, like I said, Caird was just, he was a phenomenal writer. The way he could put things is uh, he's up there in terms of authors I think every Christian should read. And this in particular is just a great resource. So I I think it's still in print. You might find used copies cheaper. It is from Oxford, so it's not going to be cheap. I mean, this was 55 bucks even like 20 something years ago when I got it. But if you're a serious student of the Bible, then it's worth every penny, I would say. So that's all for now. Like I said, just trying to introduce you to resources you may not have heard of that have been incredibly formative in my own journey of study. If you have read Care's work, let me know what you think. Leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but that'll do it for now. Stay tuned for more here at Disciple Dojo. In the meantime, poke around, check out what we have on the channel, whether it's study Bible reviews, biblical teaching series, or interviews with amazing scholars and authors. We are just trying to co- collate a library, a wealth of biblically sound information and resources. We're trying to equip, to engage, and to empower viewers and make it all freely available here on our YouTube channel. So if you like that and you want to support us, best way to do that is click the subscribe button and enable notifications. That really helps us out with the YouTube powers that be. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. As always, keep training. (music) 